When COVID happened, I got so much email from people talking to me about how did you know? How did you predict this pandemic would happen? Because to some degree, it happened not at all unlike the way that I predicted my pandemic happened in lock-in. Science fiction has predicted a lot of things that have become reality. I'm John Scalzi, I'm a science fiction author, and here are some of my favorites. First up, electric cars. My favorite example of this is by John Brunner in Stand on Zanzibar. Across the parking lot where stood a number of electric and many more human-powered cabs, he had never expected to see one of the Pioneer Morris trucks, the first fuel cell designed to achieve commercial operating cost. He wrote that back in the late 60s, early 70s, back when we still had leaded gas. The idea that he had the foresight for electric cars it's pretty smart. Number two is the cell phone. And this has been all over the place by so many people. But my favorite example is by Douglas Adams from The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, where The Hitchhiker's Guide is basically what our cell phone is now, a compendium of information from all over the world or the universe in this particular case. Number three is the internet and cyberspace. And you cannot think of cyberspace without thinking of William Gibson and the immortal Neuromancer. Now, the way that William Gibson imagined the internet is kind of like the dark web is today, sort of romantic criminals, the people who are hacking their way through the system. A thief, he'd worked for other wealthier thieves, employers who provided the exotic software required to penetrate the bright walls of corporate systems, opening windows into rich fields of data. But by and large, that's not how we use the internet today. What he didn't predict was TikTok. Space travel is next up, and I'm gonna give you a really, really deep cut for this. In 1608, Johannes Kepler wrote a novel, and not just any novel. He wrote a science fiction novel in his book, Somnium in which he imagined going into space through a, a spell that his mother gave him. Now, this wasn't so great for his mother because his mother was later tried for witchcraft, but the 17th century, pretty solid way back machine there. Next up, robots and artificial intelligence, and you cannot think about robots and artificial intelligence without thinking of Isaac Asimov and iRobot, and 2001 A Space Odyssey, written by Arthur C. Clarke. These are seminal books. They have really defined how and why and what we think about robots and artificial intelligence. There is not a roboticist alive who does not know and cannot recite the three laws of robotics from Isaac Asimov. They're so ingrained into our cultural memory of robots. One, a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. Two, a robot must obey the orders given it by human beings except where such orders would conflict with the first law. And three, a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second laws. I think when people find out that, in fact, robots aren't bound to Asimov's laws of robotics, they're kind of genuinely shocked. Next up, we have pandemics, and I'm going to give myself a call out in Lock-In, the 2014 book in which I imagined a pandemic that affects ultimately 1% of the human population. They are locked into their bodies and have to find new ways to communicate. When COVID happened, I got so much email about how did you know? How did you predict this pandemic would happen? Because to some degree, it happened not at all unlike the way that I predicted my pandemic happened in lock-in. And the answer to this is simple. I knew two things. I knew basic epidemiology and I knew human nature. You put those two things together, you can pretty much predict a pandemic. Next up, artificial satellites. And Arthur C. Clarke, the famed science fiction writer, predicted them in a letter to Wireless World magazine in 1945. He imagined a global communications network. And as it turns out, with our Starlinks and our Iridium satellites and our GPS, he kind of nailed that one. And then there are moon landings. We had a lot of them, ranging from the Earth to the Moon by George Miles to Destination Moon by Robert Heinlein and so many stories of his 
uh, future Earth. I think we have to remember that when we think about what science fiction was doing when it was imagining going to the moon, there was always going to be that moment of drama. What was the twist in the story that would make it interesting? Are there aliens? Are they stranded? Are they discovering evidence of a previous civilization? So many different stories that would happen because we landed on the moon. What we didn't necessarily know as writers is that the simple fact of landing on the moon would be exciting enough in itself, that it would be a culmination of who we were as a people up until July 20th, 1969. Finally, we have the atomic bomb. In 1913, H.G. Wells predicted something like it in his novel, The World Set Free. He imagined a catastrophic weapon unlike any we had ever seen before. And to that extent, he got it pretty spot on. Every once in a while, a writer will get it right. And sometimes it's great. And sometimes, in the case of the atomic bomb, it's genuinely terrifying. Thank you for watching. And in the meantime, please remember that a lot of my work, from Old Man's War to Travel by Bullet, is now available on Audible.